left that place and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where they were because he was teaching his disciples. He said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him and after three days he will rise. But they did not understand what he meant and were afraid to ask him about it. They came to Capernaum. When he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. Sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our sermon text for this morning is the text that was just read, and including these words from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Very famous words. Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own, is not provoked does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Yesterday, I had a wedding. And what's interesting is that's my first wedding in four years. It's pretty incredible. I used to have at least three weddings, I would say, a year at least. But I haven't had a wedding in four years. Now you might say, oh, that's because of COVID. Uh, I actually, the last wedding I had was actually during uh, COVID. You might say, well, that's just your ministry and your church, Pastor. Weddings are happening all over the time, all the time. Not really. People are getting married less and less in our world today. Why is that? There are many factors, but I would say at the end, it is a lack of what you can call biblical love. Once again, there might be many factors about that, but maybe marriage is becoming less and less popular and people are not getting married because of a lack of biblical love. It is to be feared that's what is going on right now is that people aren't getting married because of what you would call self-love. What I mean by that is that people don't want to make commitments. See, if you make a commitment in marriage, where does that leave you? That makes your life more complicated. You just can't say adios when things don't go right. If you get angry at a person or if they hurt you, you can't leave. You can't just get up and leave. You have obligations to the spouse. You have obligations to children. And you even have obligations to the community and obligations to the very government. And that's under what marriage comes. It's a government thing. If you get married, you just can't get up and leave. You can't say, I'm out of here. You have to deal with the other person. That makes marriage tough. And a person might say, well, that's true, Pastor, but do you see the goodness of all that? You're protecting yourself. You are making sure that you are free. And what if they are hurting you? You can just get out and get out of there. It's called self-protection. But the problem still is that word, self. You never enter into marriage to be about yourself. You enter marriage to be about the other person. And 
And that's what biblical love is all about. I used to not like these verses because I was mad. Oh, you idiots out there. You say these at weddings and these, that's not contextual. It's originally about people within a church and they're not loving each other and they need to love each other. And that's true. But here's the deal. The love that should be in the church also is to be in marriage. In fact, marriage is supposed to be the model of what? God's relationship with us. And God just doesn't abandon us when we sin. He forgives, and he's always starting over again. He just doesn't say, you're a loser, you hurt me, I'm out of here. No, what does he do? He forgives. Love never fails. In the end, what is love? When you look at these words and you sum it all up, you can say love is this. It's about commitment, sacrifice, and service. That is biblical love. But right now, it seems that people have a big emphasis on, well, how am I? How am I doing? How's my life going? Marriage is supposed to make me happy. I'm not really that concerned about making you happy. But you're here for me. And of course, marriage is the other way. I am here for you. I am there to build you up. We are one. We've become one flesh in the Lord. And just like I don't want to hurt myself, or if I do hurt myself, I try to cure it, and I deal with it, and I try to heal the cut. So if I cut that other person in marriage, I'm there trying to heal it, trying to cure it, trying to make things work because I am one flesh with you. But that doesn't seem to be right now what people are wanting or looking for. They don't want that commitment. They don't want that biblical love. They don't want to be having to sacrifice or to be number two in a marriage to serve and have commitment. But once again, let's read what love is about. Love is patient, love is kind, is not jealous, love does not brag and is not arrogant, does not act becomingly, does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. There's definitely a lack of biblical love. There might be plenty of romance out there, but please know this. Romance is about moment. Romance is about mood. Romance is about emotion. But love is something that is stable and endures even when it's tough. That's what biblical love is. Well, how can I get such biblical love? Well, I will tell you this today. You are here today, and this is where all biblical love starts. It is only Jesus Christ, his forgiveness, his love that can change hearts and make us say, I want to be committed to that other person. And even if I'm in a marriage and I'm having problems, I go to Jesus Christ. And I love, what does the Bible say? Because he first loved me. I am able to do the wonderful thing of forgiving my spouse. Why? Because I have been forgiven. And if God himself has forgiven my ocean of sins, can't I forgive the drops of sins that my spouse has committed against me? The answer in the view of the cross is yes, you can. Not in your own strength because of the strength that Christ gives, because of the strength that God will give today when he says, here's my love for you, here's my body, here's my blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This is the starting point, and this can make biblical love happen, perf happen not perfectly. The perfect love's right there, but it can make good things happen in a marriage. And when there is faltering, then there's forgiveness, and then there's a new start. And that's how love endures and keeps on going and keeps on trying. I say this stuff to you. Hopefully you can be a blessing to other people and tell people what marriage is about. 
it is a wonderful institution that God has created. Certainly, yes, we abuse the institution. And things don't always go right in marriage, but that's our fault. It's not the institution's fault. Marriage is supposed to be a symbol of the relationship of God's people with their Savior. May that happen in all our lives. And may we encourage and build up the institution of marriage. Not so that Pastor Schrader can get a couple extra bucks every year. But because marriage is a creation of God. Something that God gave even before the fall. God united Adam and Eve with each other even before they fell into sin. It can be a touch of paradise. By God's grace, that's what it will be. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.